So in 1801, uh, Joseph Marie Chacard uses punch cards to instruct a loom to weave Hello World into tapestry. Redditors at the time are not impressed due to the lack of tail call recursion, concurrency, or proper capitalization. <laughs> Later on in 1842, Ada Lovelace writes the first program. She is hampered in her efforts uh, by the minor inconvenience <laughs> that she doesn't have an actual computer to run her code. Enterprise architects will later relearn this technique to program in UML. <laughs> in 1936, Alan Turing invents every programming language that will ever be, but is slightly hampered by the British intelligence to be a 007 before he can patent them. In, also in 1936, uh, Alonso Church invents every language that will ever be, but does it better, sorry. His lambda calculus is ignored because it's insufficiently C-like. Uh, this criticism, of course, occurs in spite of the fact that C hasn't been invented yet. In the 1940s, various computers, I use that word, word very generously, are programmed using direct wires and switches. And the engineers, they do this in order to avoid the tabs versus spaces debate. In 1957, John Backus uh, invents Fortran at IBM. There's nothing funny about IBM or Fortran, but it is a syntax error to write it without a tie. In 1958, John McCarthy uh, invents Lisp. Due to a high cost, uh, due to depletion of uh, the post-war depletion, sorry, of strategic parentheses reserve, Lisp never really becomes popular. It does, however, remain an influential language in key algorithmic techniques such as recursion and condescension. <laughs> <laughs> After losing a bet with L. Ron Hubbard, Grace. Uh, Hopper and several others invent the capitalization of boilerplate oriented language. Years later, in a misguided sexist retaliation against Admiral Hopper, uh, Hopper's cobble work, Ruby conferences frequently feature misogynistic material. In 1964, um, John Kemney and Thomas Kurtz create BASIC, uh, an unstructured programming language for non computer scientists. In, uh, in 1965, they go to 1964. <laughs> in 1970, Guy Steele and Gerald Sussman create Scheme. Uh, their work leads to a series of Lambda the Ultimate papers culminating in Lambda the Ultimate Kitchen Utensil. This paper becomes the basis for a um, for long-running but ultimately unsuccessful uh, run of late-night infomercials. Lambdas are relegated to relative obscurity uh, until Java makes them popular by not having them. In 1970, Nicholas Wirth creates Pascal, procedural language. Criti uh, critics immediately denounce Pascal um, due to its x colon equals x plus y syntax instead of the more familiar C like x equals x plus y. This criticism happens despite C not being invented yet. In 1972, this is where I get. Dennis Ritchie invents a, pyro a powerful gun that shoots both forwards and backwards at the same time. He is slightly unsatisfied with the number of deaths and permanent maimings, so he goes on to invent C and Unix. In 1980, Alan Kay creates Smalltalk, and he invents the term object-oriented. When asked what he means, he replies, Smalltalk programs are just objects. When asked what objects are made of, he replies, objects. When asked again, he says, look, it's just objects all the way down, until you get turtles. In 1983, Bjarne Strasser bolts everything is ever heard of onto C to create C++. The resulting language is so complex that programs must be sent to the future to compile with Skynet. <laughs> Build time suffer. Skynet's motives for performing the service remains unclear, but spoke people of the future have said, there's nothing to be concerned about, baby, in an Austrian accent monotones. There's some speculation that Skynet itself is nothing more than a pretentious buffer overflow. Finally, in 1990, a committee formed by Simon Peter Jones, Paul Hudak, Philip Adler, Aston Kutcher, and people for ethical treatment of animals creates Haskell, a pure, non-strict, functional language. It does get some resistance due to the complexity of using monads to control side effects. Wadler tries to appease the critics um, by explaining that a monad is just a monoid in the category of vendor functors. So what's really the problem? Thank you. <laughs> Go see the monad talk.